Good morning. Welcome to the Parish Tonight Centre. My name is Reverend Lee Davis. I'm the priest in charge here. And today is our Book of Common Prayer uh, service. Later in the service, we have Tammy uh, opening God's word for us. And we have uh, Lucy leading us in song this morning. Let's prepare our hearts for worship this morning by just taking some time, just you and God this morning, to receive afresh from him. Beloved, we are come together in the presence of Almighty God and of the whole company of heaven to offer unto him, through our Lord Jesus Christ, our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to make confession of our sins, to pray as well for others as for ourselves, that we may know more truly the greatness of God's love and show forth in our lives the fruits of his grace. And to ask on behalf of all men such things as their well-being doth require. Wherefore, let us kneel in silence and remember God's presence with us now. As we pray together. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, and have given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins, he pardoneth and absolveth all them that truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him, which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let us sing together.
continuing in our praise of him who loves us. Let's say the Venite together. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God, a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 18, verses 1 to 25. Let's say this together. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my stony rock and my defence, my Saviour, my God and my might, in whom I will trust, my buckler, the horn also of my salvation and my strength. I will call upon the Lord, which is worthy to be praised. So shall I be safe from mine enemies. The sorrows of death compass me, and the overflowings of ungodliness made me afraid. The pains of hell came about me, the snares of death overtook me. In my trouble I will call upon the Lord and complain unto my God. So shall he hear my voice out of his holy temple, and my complaint shall come before him, it shall enter even into his ears. The earth trembled and quaked, the very foundations also of the hill shook and were moved, because he was wroth. There went a smoke out into his presence, and a consuming fire out of his mouth, so that coals were kindled at it. He bowed the heavens also and came down, and it was dark under his feet. He rode upon the cherubims and did fly. He came flying upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his secret place, his pavilion round about him with dark water and thick clouds to cover him. At the brightness of his presence his clouds removed, hailstones and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered out of heaven, and the highest gave his thunder, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them, he cast forth lightnings and destroyed them. The springs of waters were seen, and the foundations of the round world were discovered at thy chiding, O Lord, at the blasting of the breath of thy displeasure. He shall send down from on high to fetch me, and shall take me out of many waters. He shall deliver me from my strongest enemy, and from them which hate me, for they are too mighty for me. They prevented me in the day of my trouble, but the Lord was my upholder. He brought me forth also into a place of liberty. He brought me forth even because he had a favour unto me. The Lord shall reward me after my righteous dealing. According to the cleanness of my hands shall he recompense me. Because I have kept the ways of the Lord and have forsaken my God as the wicked doth. For I have an eye unto all his laws, and will not cast out his commandments from me. I also uncorrupt before him, and eschewed mine own wickedness. Therefore shall the Lord reward me after my righteous dealing, and according unto the cleanness of my hands in his eyesight. With the holy thou shalt be holy, and with a perfect man thou shalt be perfect. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Tammy will bring us our first reading. Here begins the seventh verse of the fifth chapter of Ecclesiastes. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also diverse vanities, but fear thou God. 
if thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Moreover, the profit of the earth is for all, the king himself is served by the field. He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them, and what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? The sleep of a labouring man is sweet, whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There is sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labour which he may carry away in his hand. And this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit has he that has laboured for the wind? All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he has much sorrow, and wrath with his sickness. Behold, that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and to drink, and to enjoy the good of all his labour, that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God giveth him, for it is his portion. Every man also, to whom God has given riches and wealth, has given him power to eat thereof, and to take his portion, and to rejoice in his labour. This is the gift of God. For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. Here endeth the first lesson. Let's say the Te Deum together. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth. Heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The father of an infinite majesty, thine honourable, true and only son, also the Holy Ghost, the comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou wast overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God, in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to, judge, to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them be to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee and we worship thy name, ever world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy lighten upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. Tammy will bring us our second reading. Here begins the sixth verse of the twelfth chapter of Luke. Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings? and not one of them is forgotten before God. But even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye 
are of more value than many sparrows. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then are not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you, that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek ye not what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither by be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Here endeth the second lesson. Let's say together the Jubilate Deo. O be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be ye sure that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. O go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. At the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. We beseech thee, almighty God, 
Look upon the hearty desires of thy humble servants and stretch forth the right hand of thy majesty to be our defence against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together the collect of the day. Almighty and everlasting God, who hatest not, nothing but thou has made and thus forgive the sins of all them that are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of thee the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for Peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance, to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Tammy has been on placement with us uh, this year uh, as she heads towards being licensed lay minister and uh, Tammy's going to uh, bring God's word to us this morning. So Tammy, uh, over to you. Lord, I ask that you will give me the words that you want me to speak and I ask that you will give us all open hearts and open ears to hear what you wish to speak to us today. In the name of your Son. Amen. So it's amazing to think that this chapter in Ecclesiastes was written over 3,000 years ago and is probably just as valid now as it was then. Solomon was warning people not to seek after wealth and fame and these are the very things that actually people seem to be told today that they need to be seeking for. We hear of, of children being asked, what do you want to be when you grow older? And they say, I want to be famous. You want to be famous for what? Well, I don't know. I just want to be famous. And we live in a world where someone can become famous for putting Gorilla Glue in their hair and sticking their hair to the head. It just seems incredible that nothing seems to have changed in all these years. And Solomon, as we know, was this mighty king full of wisdom. God had blessed him and he had lots of wives. Um, and, and wine and wealth and just everything anyone would have thought and unfortunately for him this all led him astray it pulled him away from God and it, we all believe that Ecclesiastes was written later on in his life as he returned back to God as he realized that all those amazing things that he had didn't actually count for very much and in today's world we seem to be told that, or people are told that what they need to seek after is their happiness. Seek for yourself. Don't be content with what you have. You want to go on the next holiday. You need to take the next trip. Don't be happy with where you live. Always be planning where you can go to next. Don't be content with what you have. What you want is the bigger house. You need the newest washing machine. You need the latest television. You need a bigger and bigger television set. You mustn't be content with what you have. And yet here in Ecclesiastes, Solomon is reminding us that God doesn't want us to be unhappy. He doesn't want us to be miserable, but God wants us to enjoy what we have, to take pleasure in what we have. It's not wrong to have wealth. I mean, most of us with a roof over our heads and food in our bellies are probably amongst the, some of the richest people in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that. God wants us to enjoy what we have. And I think it is so important that we don't forget that. But we also have that early on where it's saying to us, you know, that we will see the oppression of the poor and, and perverting of justice. And that isn't right. 
and we should feel angry and annoyed when we see it but we also shouldn't feel overwhelmed by it. We're not going to be able to fix it, but we need to always remember that God is there. God sees this and there will come a time of judgment and that the people who are committing these offences, they will be judged for what they have done. So while we know that it's wrong and we feel a righteous anger about it, it's not our job to judge it And yes, I think we should do what we can to alleviate it, but we need to know that we can't necessarily fix it all. And one of the big things we're really seeing now is because we're living in a world where people have been told that it's things that make them happy and that, you know, they need to be happy, that, that they should always be happy. That's their right to be happy. In COVID, people are really suffering. And they're struggling and they don't really know what they're supposed to do with this because suffering seems to have no purpose and they're on their own. And we, as God's children, you know, we we study our Bible and scripture does not deny that there is suffering in the world. I mean, you just have to read the Old and the New Testament. They're full of some of the most horrendous things that go on. But we have this amazing saviour, our God chose to come to earth in the form of a baby. Jesus did not think it robbery to lay aside his his godhood and to come down from heaven and to be with us on this earth. And he knows what it's like to suffer. He saw it, we're pretty sure he lost his father because Joseph doesn't get mentioned when he gets older. And we know that when he saw the death of Lazarus, his heart just broke with him and both for Lazarus's death even though he knew what he was going to do, he saw the pain of his friends and the heartbreak. And Jesus had such compassion when he saw the sick, he couldn't help himself but to heal them. So we know as Christians that we have this amazing suffering God who walks alongside us in these awful times. And we know that we have his Holy Spirit within us. And the Holy Spirit gives us that hope And he gives us a peace that nothing, nothing on this earth can take away from us. And even as things are raging around us, we still have this amazing God-given peace. And there's a joy as well that God gives us. And again, that joy is not based on worldly things and worldly possessions. It's just there. And and, and as much as things are, are awful out there in the world... And, and this, you know, this chapter in Ecclesiastes just, oh, just so reminds us that there, there is stuff going out there. But the most important thing for us is to fear God and to remember that God is with us. He never, ever leaves us. And although sometimes we might feel that God has abandoned us, I think we need to remember not only can we read Psalms where many of the psalmists felt that God had abandoned them, Jesus too knows what it feels like to feel God forsaken, that God has left us. And he cried out in pain when he felt that. And we too can cry out in pain as well. And we know that we have somewhere where we can go. We have a God, an almighty God, creator of the universe, of the heavens and the earth. And he cares about our suffering and he loves us. And he makes it really clear that our hope is not just in heaven. And we do have a sure and a certain place in heaven when we put our trust in him. And that is amazing and fantastic. But if that was all there was, then how sad would be of all people if all we're looking forward to is the end. But it's not. As this chapter in Ecclesiastes reminds us, and and if if we read in the Gospels, God wants us to have the best. He wants us to enjoy the life that he has given us. He wants us to enjoy our things, not to hang on to them tightly to our detriment, to hold everything he's given us with a loose hand, except for salvation. Hang on to your salvation with every single breath in your body. That is really important. But all the worldly gifts he has given us, those we can hold with open hands because we know that our God loves us. And that he is never, ever going to leave us. And I just pray that every single one of us will feel God's presence with us. 
that he will just feel an extra closeness to him today as he blesses us and lets us know just how much he loves us and that we will feel that and I also pray that he will give us a glimpse of the love that he feels for those around us so that we too can love them. Amen. Tammy, thank you for those words of hope this morning. As Prince Philip is in hospital, I'm going to offer an extra prayer for the royal family this morning. Almighty God, the fountain of all goodness, we humbly beseech thee to bless Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, Charles, Prince of Wales, and all the royal family. Endue them with thy Holy Spirit, enrich them with thy heavenly grace, prosper them with all happiness, and bring them to thine everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We'll be back online uh, next week, uh, which will be our contemporary service. You're very welcome to join us back here on YouTube, um, on Facebook Live, uh, Tuesday through to Friday at nine o'clock or on Catch Up at any point. Uh, we'll be Lectio Live, which is our morning prayer offering uh, with a couple of songs mixed in as well. You're, again, you're very welcome to join us either live or on Catch Up uh, later in the day. And uh, at as we get closer to Easter, details of my last Sunday uh, will become clearer. But um, we are aiming, weather permitting, to hold an outdoor service at St Paul's in the car park on Easter Sunday at 10 o'clock, uh, which will be my final service as priest in charge of Knights Elm. So it would be great to see as many of you as possible uh, there as we break bread together for, for the last time. Uh, there'll be uh, opportunities to book for that service so that we know how many are coming, how many to plan for, and so that we can keep details for track and trace. So if you're planning to come, uh, then uh, we will release some details uh, on the website and on social media uh, within the coming week to allow you to book in for that. Let's sing together our final hymn.
Let's end our time this morning together by saying the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.